So excellent. Nice to see you all guys. So really kind of want to keep this this one short, brief. As I've said, the idea of these um Katie, yeah, you need the volume on to hear. The idea of these webinars is just free sort of sessions to help support you during this this period. Um, and every week we're going to have a new topic as we start to get more and more people signed up. And as well, once we start to figure out the technology a little bit more as well, we're going to hopefully have some guests on as well to maybe share what's helping them during this period. Um, so we're looking for people to kind of join these these webinars as well. And at the same time, it gives us opportunity to answer maybe any questions that you have or see if there's any way that I personally or we can support you during this, this time too. So can you let me know if you can see the slides as well? You should now see what you'll get from this webinar and then three points. Can you let me know if you can see that? That is water, nothing funny, even though it's out of a pint glass. Cool, good stuff. So... Like I said, I'm going to keep this really, really short. Not short, but maybe like half an hour. I want to take questions as well. Um, I know everyone's busy. At the same time, at 2 um, p.m., I actually do a live stream with my my little boy, Freddie. Um, we, do, we go live on TikTok. We go live on Facebook and Instagram. And we talk about mental health from a parent and a child's perspective and how we're both kind of dealing with our mental health during this this period. It's not intense. It's more kind of coping strategies. Um, and that's always fun. So um, that starts at two. So obviously I need to get ready for that as well. But what we want to do in this session is one, talk about anxiety. So how we can manage anxiety during this tough period and highlight five tips that you can take away. Um, a weekly task to try for next week's webinar as well, which we're also going to discuss. And then time for Q&A as well, potentially at the begin at the end. So um that's kind of what we're going through. The main bulk of this is kind of managing anxiety. And the first question that I want to ask you on this session, and we're going to do this with every session, is how are you? And sometimes in this mental health space, we always say ask twice, because normally when we say how are you, you'll say I'm fine. So if I say how are you, and I'm actually asking the question, and I want to know an answer, rather than yeah, I'm fine. Um, let me know in the chat box, you know, how are you doing during this, this period? I'll, I'll start with me. Um, I'm doing okay. The lack of routine actually has been playing on my mind a little bit and affecting me a little bit. This weekend, I found actually a lot harder because I didn't really have much routine. It was like, what should we do this weekend? Oh, we can't do anything. So we're just going to sort of lounge around. And although it sounds amazing, actually, I find my my mental health declines when I just sit and do nothing and have no real routine or structure to my, to my day. Um, but from yesterday and today, I've made sure that I've tried to stay active at least once, like go out for my one walk a day. Um, this today, I, yesterday I went for a run on my own. Today I went away for, with, away for a walk with the family. And that's really kind of helped me. Um, Simon's all good. Katie's good. David, anxiety is very high at the moment. I think, again, a lot of people are feeling that, David. And hopefully this, this, this webinar will help. Not sleeping well, which is a huge impact as well. Work super busy. Does anyone find you're working more working from home? I'm finding this a lot that we feel like working from home is great. We're actually working a lot more. Um, roller coaster of emotions, very up and down. Scared of the future. Feel my anxiety is kicking in. Self isolation for 16 days. Final year of my degree, I have no motivation, doesn't have no structure. That's tough, Katie, as well, especially um, if you're in your final year of de your degree, you've almost got that purpose. And now that's kind of. Um, not been taken away from you, but it's not there anymore. And structure is so important as well. Nicholas, same as Caroline, go for a, a roller coaster of emotions, hard to adapt to new routine. Hope did a long run this morning, which helped. Amazing. Had to had time to work on two mental health presentations. PA, I get that. It's like you, we wake up sometimes and we ask, you know, what am I doing here? What am I doing today? Um, it's hard trying to be positive for others, making sure I have my therapy remotely in to help have my space amazing hopes of sort of keeping in touch last week we spoke about proactively managing your mental health like not reacting because this period is all about reacting we're reacting to it so like if we can proactively book in our therapy sessions if we can proactively go for runs do meditation whatever it is um and have that self-care time i personally feel that's going to help a lot my mum literally just texted me because i was working a lot yesterday she texted me today just now and she was like make sure you read today and i was like okay mom it's true. I need to. I need to do some reading today. I need to switch off. Can't find motivation to work out, especially hard at um, home as well. 
Cool. Yeah, and I think that lack of control, like you've said as well, Jeremy, managing my own well-being, work from home, caring for two family members and 12 weeks lockdown tough. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, it is a lot. And it's, it's hard, especially because, you know, last week was my wife, as I, I think I mentioned, she works at the NHS. So she was working sort of all week last week. She normally works part time. Um, she's actually finished. It was her last day on Friday, believe it or not. Um, and I did like homeschooling mixed with making sure I was there for her. She had a really tough week and at the same time trying to do my work. And when you're in that house, it can be a bit too much. Um, and I'm still very grateful that I've got that, but I know a lot of people are in situations, especially at home, that it can be very hard to, to, to manage. Um, good stuff, guys. I really appreciate your honesty as well. Um, I'm not going to share much about me because I shared a lot about it last time, but right at the moment, you know, I do a lot of campaigning work. I do a lot of speaking around mental health. I personally share my story of, of losing my dad um, to suicide back in 2009 and kind of how that impacted me the emotions I suppressed for a long time, the kind of depression and the anxiety that came from that personally, um, not being able to deal with that, the kind of the way I managed that and the way that I dealt with those emotions is what I talk a lot about, especially as a man, like wearing that mask, brave face. Um, so that's kind of what I do. And kind of, as I've said, now I do a lot of campaigning work around mental health and try and get people to talk more openly about it. So just seeing your answers and the honesty of your answers and you on this webinar today is really kind of inspiring to me because um, the more people can talk about it, like the, the better. Um, so in terms of the kind of bulk of this, this, this webinar, I want to talk about five tips to help you manage your anxiety during this period. And during this period, anxiety may increase, especially while we're self-isolating. So how can we actually manage um, that anxiety. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share five tips that we've kind of put together. And then I want to hear kind of maybe what helps you as well. And maybe others can learn from that um, also. So the first tip is that it's quite an obvious one, but limit your exposure to the news. So I've done it. I put the news on. I hardly ever watch the news. But during this period, I am watching the news because I want to hear what's going on. I also want to hear, um, you know, how that's impacting me. What's the, 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 the recent kind of laws they're putting in place around this period? Um, but just hearing the news sound, I don't know if that <laughs> affects any of you as well, but it just scares me just hearing the sound of the news and then just the tone of the the, the news, the voice, everything. It's kind of like, oh, um, and it, it really does impact me within like a minute of watching the news. I can feel my sort of, you know, mental health being impacted. Um, so this isn't me saying just switch off the news, do whatever you want, you know, go against what everyone's saying. But at the same time, you know, limit your exposure to the news. And ages ago, I think I did a video about controlling the information that you're feeding your mind. It's like um, someone made the example of if you've just bought a Ferrari, you wouldn't go to the gas station and fill it up with the wrong gas. Um, the same with like, you know, fueling your, your body. If you want to, you know, maybe become physically healthy, looking after your, your body in terms of exercise, but also what you're eating is extremely important. Now with, with mental health, sometimes the information that's going into our mind is what's feeding our mind. And um, that's what's difficult as well. Amanda can't get any sound. Is everyone else all right? Amanda, um, I don't know whether you have a volume button you can control. Can everyone else hear me okay? Just let me know. Cool. Amanda, there might be like a volume button. So controlling the information that you're feeding into your mind. So I started to do this a couple of years ago, especially with social media. I actually deleted my old social media with all of my school friends on it because I used to wake up, scroll through it and find out what Jack from year nine was up to. And I didn't, it wasn't really benefiting me in any way. Um, so I was starting to control the information. I didn't read the news. I didn't buy newspapers. And I started to try and feed my mind with more positive stories. But during this period, it's a lot more difficult. So controlling the information you're feeding your mind is more about trying to manage it. So limit your exposure to it. Also limit your social media exposure. Every time I go on Facebook, every time I go on LinkedIn, every time I go on Twitter, there's something about the coronavirus or what might have happened. And um, I also found myself reading articles around Italy and China and what they've learned. And I thought, I want to learn what they've learned. And then actually reading those articles put more anxiety on me because I was like, wow, that doesn't sound great they're out of that now but we've got a long way until we're, we're there um so i've actually started limiting my social media exposure as well i am also finding and i don't know if any of you agree with this although there's a lot of coronavirus information still going out there i feel like it's kind of tailing back a little bit even us when we're doing our social media i said to the guys on monday 
we still need to put out content around coronavirus and dealing with this sort of period. But let's not just make it all about that, because actually we may be having a negative effect on people. You know, why don't we start sharing normal content um, around sort of positive mental well-being? And it doesn't have to be directly linked to the coronavirus. And I think that will slowly start to change the limit in your social media exposure. The other tip that I'd give with that is on your newsfeed on Facebook, um, on all of them, is if someone and you might know this someone is always sharing about it and they're very opinionated about it and you get drawn into their posts and it sort of you know even makes you angry or it makes you anxious or, or you know creates fear just literally press the little button in the top right and go hide these posts from my newsfeed. So you're not unfollowing that person, you're not removing them as a friend, but literally just hide those posts. And what Facebook, Instagram will do is they won't show you any more posts of, of that person. Um, so Kate has done that. Um, Hope agrees with that as well. Like the, you know the guy, you know the people, right? There's, there's the people that are very opinionated about it and they'll just share and share and share or they share articles and articles and articles and articles. Um, snooze for 30 days button, Exactly. Like muting those people is really important because every time I get on my phone and I'm scrolling through, you know, Instagram, I'm scrolling through Facebook, I'm exposed to information. And if that information isn't very good for me, it's going to put me in a, a different sort of mindset um, and stay in touch only when needed. So, again, you know, just just be in touch with what's happening. So, you know, that you're doing the right things. But, you know, we don't have to read every article about what could happen. And this might be expecting to happen because all of that can create a lot of fear, um, you know, on us. The second tip is be OK with anxiety. So this for me, actually, even when I say it now, um, still doesn't feel very good to say it. Now, the reason why it doesn't feel very good to say it is because my mind is very naturally competitive. And what that means is I always want to get better. and from the age of 22, I would say, I fell down this sort of rabbit hole of self-improvement. I don't know if any of you can relate to this, where I wanted to get better. I wanted to get better. I wanted to get better. I tried everything. I was obsessed with becoming better and becoming the better version of myself. Um, and what that simply meant is I have to become better at everything. And every time I feel bad, I am wrong because I need to be better. I need to be better. I need to be better. And actually, being okay with how I am was the big catalyst to actually being able to move forward. So if I'm not feeling good, it isn't a negative reflection on me that I'm not getting better. I need to get better. It's more actually, let me accept this. Let me know that this is okay. Um, but it doesn't mean that I cannot get through this. And that acceptance isn't us giving in to anxiety. That acceptance is us allowing that anxiety to be there, but actually understanding that we can get through it. Um, and what I find is when I try and punch anxiety in the face, when I resist it, the negative cycle continues. So I wake up, I'm feeling anxious and I'm like, why am I feeling anxious? I know what I should be doing. I know the tools to um, get over this anxiety, but I'm still feeling anxious. There's something wrong with me. And all of a sudden I start beating myself up and that negative cycle continues. Um, can anyone relate to that? That maybe has anxiety and it, it, not even anxiety. It works for a lot of stuff where we beat ourselves up and it gets into a negative cycle. It's almost like when I've always tried to eat healthily and then I eat some cake and then I beat myself up and now I'm back into a negative cycle. That means I'm eating more and more cake. Um, so for me, um, you know, it's it's trying to accept it and understand that the first thing of me knowing that I need to do something about it is a big step. So all of you that are on this webinar, it's a big step that you've taken, that you've said, I need a little bit of help, a little bit of support, whatever that is during this period. Um, and I'm going to go and get that. That's self-awareness to know that you need that support or you want that support um, or you're interested in that support is huge. It's a massive step rather than just ignoring it. Um, know that you're not alone feeling this way as well. Like everyone is feeling a certain way during this time. And if you're really struggling with it, you're not alone in that situation too. Uh, Katie says, unfortunately, I was in a cycle, had a, a breakdown a year ago. I realized that I can't always be perfect, but I can manage my anxiety. I think that's really key as well, perfectionism, and especially linking back to social media. And Hope does a lot of work on this as well, which is great. It's more about we are striving to be perfect at all times. And I don't feel that's a huge, um, that's not beneficial for, for our mental health. Pia, totally, it's sometimes difficult to tell, though, whether you use the tools and know that could potentially make you feel better or just stay with the feeling for a bit and let it be. I think it's that very, very fine balance. Like I don't want to sit in this anxious place for a long time, but I'm also there to say these emotions are normal. These emotions are natural. 
and now I'm going to use the tools to work through to work through it. So it's not letting it be there and just ignoring it. It's being okay with it being there, but now using the tools to get through it. Tip number three, the importance of routine. I spoke about this last week when it comes to working from home, like getting up, wearing the clothes that you would normally wear, you know, putting your makeup on if you want, you know, doing your hair. This takes me a good, good minute or so. Um, but like feeling good and kind of putting yourself in that good routine. Um, so how you start in your day and how you end in your day. Now, starting the day is important, you know, morning routine, especially because if you've got your laptop at home, you're working from home. Like it's easy for me to come from upstairs, downstairs, open the laptop. I'm working. OK, so I'm starting my day without any kind of routine or self-care before. Whereas this morning, what I tried to do is I got up, I came down, I made. Um, did I make him breakfast today? No, my wife made him breakfast. Actually, I made him a cup of tea and a biscuit. That's the typical dad way. Made my two boys a cup of tea and biscuits. Um, I then did a little bit of reading. I then had a shower. I then had a coffee. And then I came and cracked on with work. Um, so for me, that little bit of time in, in before, before I even did any work was beneficial. But what I did do wrong, I'm not perfect. What I did do wrong is I worked until 10.30 last night, 10.30 p.m. The way I ended my day wasn't very good. So my routine last night wasn't very good. But I find that when I have a lack of routine during this period, it can really impact me um, as well. Um, routine is key, especially for those recovering from an eating disorder. Morning routine is more important to tackle than the evening. How do you make the switch between weekday and weekend days? Hope I find that harder. I don't know if you, anyone else can relate. I find it harder to switch between weekdays and weekend days now when we're always at home. Like when I was sort of commute into London, you're out and about, the weekend comes and it's like, this is the release. But now I've actually found it a little bit more difficult because you're still at home. Um, it's harder to switch, yeah. But yeah, morning routine. Like I said, there's a really good book called The Miracle Morning, a guy called Hal Elrod, I think it is. Um, he says about the importance of just spending 20, 30 minutes on savers, which is silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading and scribing, which is journaling. I would just say choose maybe one or two of them in the mornings. It's going to really help productivity, but it's also going to help your mental health too. Um, I feel like I'm going through waves when I realize I need to do something. I start to feel better. So I don't do anything for a while and then feel better and then I'll start feeling crap again. Yeah, and it's that kind of cycle that happens, you know, and I think a lot of people can relate to that as well. Also, how often are you taking breaks? It's really important with routine. How, how often do you take breaks? How do you, how you schedule in your breaks? So like I said, one break I had this morning was um, I went for a walk with my family and they were like, do you want to come? And my mind saying, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this. But I thought to myself, if I go, it's going to actually make me feel better and that's going to make me pr more productive throughout the day. So scheduling breaks, um, even like eating, like it's very easy for me to sit here and you sit there and eat while you're working. Maybe try and step away and, and kind of take those breaks. That for me helps anxiety during this period. And then how much time are you spending on you? So during this period, especially if you've got kids or you're living with people um, as well, even if you're not living with people, you might be worried about your parents. You might be worried about your grandparents, your friends, people that you can't see, that you can't connect with, that you can't help. Um, and you may be the same as me, but very quickly, my mind starts wandering in various different places. You know, is uh, my wife OK? Are my kids OK? Am I doing the right stuff for them? Um, are they doing all right with homeschool? And then my mind wanders to my granddad that I can't see. You know, my granddad's 94. He's got carers. I know they're looking after him, but it's like I can't see him. When's the next time I'm going to be able to see him? You know, my mum and brother, you know, how are they getting on? How's my brother sort of getting on? Um, and all of a sudden, you know, everything's coming at me and I'm worried about everyone else, but I'm not focused on me. And I think it's so important during this time that we have some us time, we have some me time. And whether that's you going for a run on your own or a walk on your own, or it's you separating yourself from everyone else in the household and just doing some reading or doing some meditation or, or doing home workout, whatever it is, um, to kind of step back and have a bit of you time. Because one of my favorite quotes is, you don't set yourself on fire to keep others warm. And I think we're so in this situation trying to help others, but we have to look after ourselves first as well. Number four, keep your mind and your body active. Are you taking your one walk a day? I believe that's still allowed. Everyone's out for a walk. I've seen more people out than I've ever done before. You know, are you taking that one walk? Are you taking um, a run in the morning, like Hope said, or like, you know, just a run at some point? Um, trying to get out, especially while we're, whilst we're allowed, is so important for me. Just being stuck indoors can create a lot of anxiety, 
can create a lot of um, uncertainty and fear. And just sometimes going outside, and even though you've got a sort of self distance from each other, just seeing people and being outside, however hippie that sounds, really, really kind of helps. Limiting your coffee and your sugar intake, which is a difficult one, but for anxiety, um, I never go any more than three coffees a day. And I love coffee and I drink black coffee. Um, if I go over three coffees a day, I feel that impacts my my anxiety. And again, everyone's so different, but I find that caffeine, especially a lot of caffeine during this period, can, can impact um, my anxiety and how I'm feeling. And then also using this time to learn and to grow. So keeping your mind and your body active during this time, you've probably got more time on your hands than you've done before. And we're normally just going to fill that with work. We're normally maybe going to fill that with sort of, I don't know, not all the time, but sort of negative habits, maybe just structuring in half an hour, an hour. Um, as I mentioned last week, using that commute time that you used to spend for self-care to learn to grow. Um, you know, my wife was mentioning she's always wanted to learn calligraphy. And um, I said, like, this is the perfect time to learn it. There's lots of online courses out there um, for you to kind of learn it. Um, you know, for me, if I wanted to learn Spanish, that's Maybe I should pick that up. I need to take my own advice, like using this time to learn and to grow and um, to become a better version of yourself. At the same time as well, I'd also say there, there's also a huge amount of pressure on social media in particular of like, do this, do this, do this, do this. Here's my schedule of the day. Um, do not compare yourself to that. Sometimes if, if, if you wake up and you have a rubbish day and you've done a little bit of work and you know, you've, you've eaten and you've gone back to sleep and that's all you've done don't beat yourself up over it you know don't compare yourself to these schedules and what everyone else is doing because i think that can you know have a negative impact as well but using like using this time to learn to grow to better yourself i think is really important as well and keeping your mind and body active especially with exercise you know for me that really kind of helps um the anxiety and then tip number five talk about it you know someone that you trust with someone that you trust so Staying connected is really important, um, especially during this time. Like video chat for me humanizes that conversation as well. It's not the same as just picking up the phone. It's not the same as texting someone. For me, however daunting it is, if even if you look very, you know, you don't look your greatest and you're like, I don't want to go on video. Um, that's why I wanted to put webcam on here. I'm looking at myself thinking, God, you, you look rough, Paul. Um, my mind's playing tricks for me. But at the same time, I wanted to do it so it humanizes that conversation. Um, so video chat is really important. Also, it doesn't have to be business video chats. Like I've been caught up in every video chat that I'm having recently is for business meetings. And actually that's not, I'm finding this kind of, it's not impacting me, but it's having a bit of, oh my God, I've got another Zoom call, another Zoom call. Um, whereas one of my friends messaged me and said, hey, do you want a coffee and a chat, like a video chat? And I thought, you know, that's actually a good idea. And it makes me feel like I want to do it. It's that escape time. Instead of going and meeting him for a pint or going and meeting him for, you know, a coffee, um, we're actually just going to sit on FaceTime and have a coffee and drink it and chat and just kind of switch off from work. So staying connected is really important and, and, you know, talking to people about it. Communicating how you feel comfortable is really important as well. There's a huge emphasis on talk about how you feel, talk about how you feel. Um, but for me, a lot of people struggle to do that. And I struggled to do that for a long time. And actually what I found helped was um, writing it down. And I think hope as well. Um, you know, this, this benefited you. I, I'm pretty certain reading your book as well and knowing you that writing it down during this period can help communicate how you feel too. So, you know, me ringing my mum and telling her that I'm really struggling with this, this and this and this doesn't feel very comfortable to me. Um, it's quite daunting to be able to do that. And then I'm worried that I'm putting that on her now, whereas writing it down and maybe looking at it myself or writing it down and, you know, giving it to my wife or writing it down in an email and, and sending it to someone that I trust. Um, it feels less daunting. So communicating those emotions and how you feel in the way that you feel comfortable is very important. It's not always about verbalizing it. Some people like that, um, but others don't um, like drawing. It sounds, you know, Freddie, my son, he was saying drawing actually really helps him. And that's what his way of kind of expressing how he's feeling um, as well. Um, Hope says, I think writing before bed is great for me too. It stops me ruminating. I love that as well. Writing down helps my daughter. She also does it before she goes to sleep at night, writes one thing she's grateful for for the day. I love that. Simon says, I need to start using my journal. Yeah, whether it's a plain piece of paper, you've got journals like the self the self journal, you've got the five minute journal. There's lots out there. Um, just find what works for you um, as well. What I also found as well, and again, this, this is probably just, 
for me is is video um and but videoing it and then and then keeping the videos to myself so i wasn't publicly sharing them back then and i could kind of look back on those videos and say oh wow like you know i remember saying that and now i've moved on from that and now i feel this way and just sometimes videoing it and verbalizing it and you know going over what you're you're feeling into a camera can actually help a lot of people too so there's loads of ways of doing it you just have to find what works for you and ignoring it can often make it worse so when we talk about it it's it's dealing with those emotions that we're suppressing and i've spoken about this before with you know my dad my dad obviously was suppressing a lot of emotions which then caused you know him to break very suddenly um for me when when we lost my dad i i got very upset i got very angry and then i just literally suppressed those emotions i literally bottled them up pushed them down as far as they could go um and started to look for short little hits of that dopamine like buying a brand new car starting a business chasing money buying a suit you know whatever it was um to feel good alcohol whatever to feel a little bit of you know happiness but then very short it's very short-lived because those emotions that are suppressed will always kind of find their way up they'll always find their way up and Often when we ignore the anxiety, it can often make it worse. So talking about it, expressing it, not suppressing it um, is, is, for me, extremely, extremely important. And I know lots of people in the campaign for mental health beat that drum, but I think it's so, so important. It's so vital as well. So I'm going to ask you this question, um, and I want you to kind of put it in the chat box, and I'll read them out and see if it helps other people. How do you currently deal with your anxiety during this time? So... Um, use the chat box. How are you dealing with your anxiety during this time? Um, and then I'll start reading them out so you can kind of get some potential tips that you might want to utilize as well. So just write in the chat box, guys, and I'll start reading them out. So Simon says, Simon says, I need to start using my journal. Said that meditation has helped. Okay, so meditation, is there any types of meditation that you use, Simon, or any apps that you use um, that help you? And for me, meditation helps, and it's kind of just maybe spending five, ten minutes on it, not like overstretching it and spending like half an hour or an hour at that time. Hope, routine, journal, I'm running, amazing. Andy, breathing exercises, journal, mind maps of positivity and negativity. I like that idea, Andy, because sometimes when the negatives are up here, they get heightened. Right. And I think that's what I'd sometimes do with journaling. When they're up here, the negativity, it can be more daunting to deal with. But when it's down on a piece of paper and I can kind of rationalize it, um, it gets a lot easier to deal with. I'm the master of burying it deep down. But I think you knowing that is so important as well. It's that self-awareness of knowing that you bury it deep down. Um, that's the first step for me to actually start, you know, trying to deal with it. So I wouldn't see that as as a negative. Caroline reading, breathing exercises, doing something in the garden with the kids. Love that. Simon uses the Calm app. Really good. Yeah, Calm's great. Like Headspace is great as well. Nicola routine, just being kind to myself and exercise. Being kind to myself. That's I love that one as well. Because again, I, I put a post out the other day. It's really important that we show compassion to others during this period. But it's also equally important that we show compassion to ourselves, that we're kind to ourselves during this time as well. Trying to focus on one day at a time rather than the next weeks or months. It freaks me out when I remember that we won't know how long this is going to take. PR, I love that. Um, it's, I find it the hardest thing to do, staying present and just focusing on the now moment. But in reality, that's all we can actually do. And I think, like you said, PR, if your mind starts wandering to weeks and months, trying to like bring it back and focus on one day at a time, one step at a time. I make mind maps and plan for the future, Katie. Amazing. Trying to maintain normal routine. Um, keeping occupied. Share five positives each day with a colleague. Helps you look for the positives in each day. Long break in the middle of the day to take over homeschooling. Reduce watching and reading of news on coronavirus. Start reading a book, walking every day. Like that, Amanda. Really good tips as well. Celebrate the small wins daily. Yeah, love that. And I think celebrating the small wins daily, again, that was something that really was a catalyst to me getting better. Um, instead of saying, I need to go for an hour's run because that's what I used to do. It was like, I need to just get out of bed, <laughs> put my gym, my running shoes on and run for five minutes. Um, and then when I run for five minutes, really kind of over, over reward myself. Like, well done, you did great there. And it kind of puts you in a much more positive mindset than saying, why did you only run for five minutes? You should have run for an hour. Um, so those small wins, Caroline, as you say, for me is super important too. 
social media cleanse yeah i feel like with social media we're on it maybe more now than we are when we're working in the office because we can get sort of drawn into our phones if we're in the office we might not get drawn into our phones because you know people are watching us but because we're at home it's very easy for us to kind of be on social media a lot more in fact that's very interesting to maybe look at as well like has your activity gone up look at your phone um and maybe as you said social media cleansing might help good stuff so do you guys have any questions at all that you want me to attempt to answer um again like i say i share from personal experience if there's any questions that i personally cannot answer um i'll put you in touch with um someone on our team that will be able to help from a clinical side of it um also if anyone in the group may help as well but let me know do you guys have any questions if you don't have any questions if you can say no that would be perfect as well because then i can kind of um move on hope thank you so much and we're going to definitely get you on as well i really want to get you on once i've figured out the technology of getting more than one person on here like i think we will we will be fine um, but I, as I said, I don't want this to just be me every week. Like I want to get people on, um, sharing their sort of advice. If you do want to come on, just drop me an email. Um, here's my email. I'll just put it in the chat box. Or everymanatwork.com. Cool. Now the, the tip, the, the kind of weekly task that I want to set you guys, um, is between now and next week's so the next week's webinar um is i want you to do something that you've been putting off for a long time so you only have to do it once in this week um you can do it more than once but something that you've been putting off for a long long time so for me what i've been putting off for a long long time is um like not yoga but just increasing my improving my flexibility so as i'm getting older and i'm doing a lot more running i can feel myself getting achy and horrible and doing like mobility work and yoga or whatever it is to kind of improve that flexibility i've been putting off for probably i'd say a good 10 years now um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do at least one session this week and that's something that i'm holding myself accountable to and i want you guys to hold me accountable to that as well i also want you to think of something that you're going to be doing um at least once this week something that you've been putting up for a long time um and that's kind of your task for the week ahead as well good stuff um just finally guys there's free advice um if you go to everymanatwork.com forward slash covid19 again we're putting out and we're trying to update that more and more and then finally what i also am going to say and we are sort of publicly announcing this and the words kind of getting out is um every mind the company that i've created is, is an app it's a platform that we've created over the last say 14 months and we were very close to launching publicly launching and then obviously all of this help happened and i turned around to to everyone involved and sort of said you know i want to try and give some value to businesses and employees during this time and we came up with the idea of obviously giving it giving the platform away for free um now lots of other people are giving away stuff for free um during this period so i wanted to kind of go even a little bit further and people were saying let's give it away for free for a month the first month the first two months the first three months um, and I've actually decided that um, anyone can access the app, any business can access the app um, free for six months. Um, and the kind of app is, is there to kind of support your, your employees. Um, it's mental health support in your pocket whenever you need it. And essentially, guys, um, if you want to know a little bit more about that as well, if you just go to everymindatwork.com forward slash free, as I said, we're offering it free to companies of any size at this stage um, for six months. Um, no payment, no obligation. It's all about us saying, here's an app that we can customize to your business, that we can give access to your employees. They can use it while they're at home. It's there for them when they need it. We're adding more and more content to it around self-isolation, working from home. Um, and at the same time, you know, we're going to give it to you for free for six months and work with you to try and help you support your employees during this time as well. So again, that's everymanatwork.com forward slash free or share that with your HR wellbeing team, whatever you need to do. But guys, thank you so much for coming on. Um, and thank you for all your interaction. And you should automatically be opted into the next webinar, which is next week, same time. Um, and also I'll send out this replay very, very shortly. But thank you so much for coming on. Enjoy the rest of your week. If there's anything you need, um, just let me know. See you guys. Bye.